Let's go. Coming up next, we have Sean Strickland. You become a star, and, and someone says, "Let me ask you model. something. Are you are you are you, are chance, you gay? Have you had the chance no, to are, interact are, with a more diverse? Are you? Of, let me know. Are, are you gay? Can I hear? Can I get an answer? Well, no, I'm asking. I'm, this is a part of. The, are you are you a gay man? I'm an ally of the community. Okay. Versus Paulo Costa. But now, we have a new liquid gold, the secret jewels. Both guys, entertaining, in different regards. I think Sean talks more entertaining than he fights. Paulo is just, you know, he, he's a character through and through. Um, super entertaining matchup, stylistically an awesome fight. You have the great defense of Sean Strickland and you have the relentless power of Paulo Costa. Paulo Costa coming off a great performance against Robert Whitaker. He didn't get the victory, but he looked really, really good after a long layoff and a bunch of setbacks. Um, Sean Strickland just coming off of losing his title to Drickus Duplessis, where once again, same with Paulo Costa, looked pretty good in the fight, but just came up short. I love this matchup. What do you guys think? It's really interesting because normally we would think of this fight as boxer versus boxer because old school Paulo Costa with some body kicks was mainly hands, uppercuts and hooks. But in his last fight against Robert Whitaker, there was so many kicks. The low kicks, the middle kicks, the switch kicks, the wheel kick that rocked him on the feet. He fought at a different range being a lot more willing to be on the outside instead of so much pressuring. So I'm really curious to see which version of Paulo Costa we see against Strickland. More boxing or more kicking? What do you think? You know, I think Paulo Costa is a really rare talent. He's hilarious on Twitter if you don't follow him on Twitter, but he's also just tremendously athletic for a bodybuilder. That was his base. His athletic base was a bodybuilder. And it so seldom translates over. We have seen him get tired when he was in the Ultimate Fighter Brazil way back in the day, but he seemingly fixed a lot of those cardio issues. He went five rounds against Marvin Vittori in a close fight, and against the upper echelon in the division, he's still performing super well, like you said, against Whitaker. Sean Strickland is a defensive master. He's so good at his shoulder rolls, rolls his stiff arms, seeing things coming, and uh, doesn't throw at 100%, but he's got that volume. For me, in this fight, is, is can Sean Strickland pour it on when he needs to. Sometimes it turns into Sean Strickland's gonna jab for most of this round and play a bit defensively and maybe pick it up at the end of the round. We need him to get to that second gear, that third gear that we didn't really see in the Drickus fight until later on, until the fifth round, which I thought he stole the fifth round. So for me, that's a big question mark in this fight. Prediction time, fellas, who we got and how. What do you think, Chris? This is a tough one to call. It's a tough one to call because you know, Paulo ha has that crazy power and the explosiveness, but it's like almost offset versus Sean Strickland's impeccable defense. It's mm -hmm. the uh, it's the immovable object versus the unstoppable force. You know, which one's going to come through? And, and do we think that Sean Strickland can do enough damage that could really like drown Paulo Costa? Because remember, it's only three rounds. It's not a five round fight. So do we think that, that Sean Strickland will be able to put on that volume to drown Paulo Costa, really make those cardio issues bleed through, or do we think Paulo Costa is gonna get through the guard and do some damage? Me personally, I love Sean Strickland's style, Philly Shell, but I, I think Paulo Costa feels like he was scorned in that Robert Whitaker fight and he's gonna be coming back with a vengeance. Um, I think he's gonna crowd Sean Strickland, not give him any space, pressure, 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 and he's eventually just gonna overwhelm those senses and he's gonna get through. I don't think he gets him out of there, but I do see it being a semi-dominant performance from Paulo Costa. Interesting. Dang young. I, I'm gonna lean towards Sean. I think historically we've kind of seen when somebody wins a title, they level up, partly in the confidence and belief in himself of, man, I'm, I'm the best in the world. And then just of taking things extra, extra seriously, extra attention from coaches, everything else. I think Sean has probably leveled up from being champ I picture this being a close fight. I picture this being a hard fight. Costa might even drop him. But I think overall, I'm going to lean towards Sean in the decision. What do you think, Ryan? Sean Strickland has surprised me in his kick, defense, and a few performances, most notably against Israel Adesanya. He did great at checking kicks. He caught a lot of middle kicks, mm -hmm. which Izzy did against Costa back in the day when they fought. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Strickland is used to people trying to box him. Costa is such a powerhouse. Like you said, I think it's going to be a scrap. I, I could see Costa dropping him. I could see this being fight of the night. But ultimately, I'm going to go with Sean Strickland on this one. Maybe he mixes it up and gets some takedowns. Who knows? Hopefully, we don't see the jab Strickland. We see some pressure boxing. We see a fantastic fight. And we see a Strickland getting his hand raised at the end of the day.
It's a split decision from us. Two for Strickland, one for Costa. That may be foreshadowing of what the fight's gonna be like. We'll see.